All right, this is my last Punta Cana video. Can you believe it? I can't. The never ending trip is officially over. Uh, 36 days. I stayed at eight all inclusives. I made videos on seven, seven and a half. Um, I'm on the floor. I mean, literally and figuratively, mentally. I purposely and strategically saved this video for the very end. This is intended for you people who are curious about Punta Cana or coming to Punta Cana for the first time. This is 25 things you need to know, tips, tricks, hacks, and surprises. So let's get right into it. Uh, number one, Punta Cana is the best value in the Caribbean. It might be the best value in the world. I'm not sure of another destination where you can get these type of luxury accommodations plus free food and free drink. So best value in the Caribbean, absolutely. Best value in the world, probably. Number two, the dollar goes a long way. Uh, you still can get a lot for your dollar here. This kind of goes along with number one. Uh, but if you want to bring your dollars and really get the most out of them in terms of a destination, you're going to get so much more here than you would say in Miami, in Bermuda, uh, in London or in a Tokyo, any vacation spot. So if you're looking to maximize the power of a dollar, you definitely want to come to Punta Cana. It still goes a long way here. Uh, number three, this one might be kind of obvious, but I'm going to state it. Most hotels are all inclusive. I'm not the biggest fan of all inclusive resorts. I've made that clear in several of my videos from a long, long time ago up until now, but they are growing on me, but you pretty much have no choice in Punta Cana. So if you are coming here and you're looking for a non all inclusive, there aren't that many options. Moreover, the best options are all inclusive. So Punta Cana is pretty much, I'd say 95% all inclusive hotels. Okay, number four, good luck leaving your hotel. Now, of course you can leave. They physically can't force you to stay here or there, uh, but they make it difficult to leave. They want you on campus as much as possible. From a safety, security, and somewhat of a liability standpoint, they don't want you leaving. If you want to take an Uber, for example, you have to walk to the main gate or get a ride to the main gate, and those main gates are typically a half mile to a mile away. There's kind of an undertone that they really don't want you going out and coming back in. Of course, they can't stop you, but generally speaking, they don't make it easy for you to leave the property. Uh, number five, if you do leave the property and make friends or have friends or friends staying at another property, Good luck having them visit your hotel. Uh, it's pretty much not happening. Some of the hotels do have visitor rates and typically they can come visit from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Typically that's $100 to $200 depending on the hotel or they can visit from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. And that again is another rate, $100 to $200 uh, depending on what the hotel charges. Some hotels will let your friends stay overnight but they have to be out by 8 a.m. or 10 a.m they basically make it impossible for someone to come visit. And if you do want them to come visit, you're gonna to have to pay a hefty price for it. So generally speaking, if you do meet someone uh, who's special, or if you do wanna have a friend come visit, good luck. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to have. All right, number six, I think this is number six. The taxis are expensive. These taxis are more expensive than what you pay in Chicago or New York. Um, it's a ripoff. It's collusionary. Everybody is in on it. It's just the way it is. There is no meter. Uh, it's pretty much price on request and they are egregiously expensive. Uh, a taxi from the airport, depending on where your hotel is, can cost anywhere from 30 to $60. Just going two miles, they're gonna quote you like $20. So the taxis are outrageously expensive. I absolutely recommend getting an Uber. As I talked about before, if you wanna get a taxi, be prepared to fork over a lot of cash. Okay, number seven, this is a follow-up to number six, um, negotiate. Negotiations are imperative, especially with taxis, but uh, there are other places to negotiate as well. You just have to use your best judgment. For taxis specifically, I'm usually able to cut the cost by 50%. Um, now you have to use your discretion again on when you can negotiate, but you absolutely can with taxis. And don't be afraid to say no. Uh, if you and a taxi cannot agree on a price, there will be another one right around the bend and they will most likely accept your price. So definitely, definitely negotiate when you can. Okay, number eight, uh, the food is average. Generally speaking, it's average. Uh, you are gonna find some terrible food. You are gonna find some good food, but at these all-inclusives, this is pretty well known, the food is average. So if you are a huge foodie, be prepared to lower your expectations. And if you're looking for a phenomenal meal, I highly recommend booking a higher end uh, property because they're gonna have the best food. But if you're staying at 
uh, an average four-star place. Expect very much average food. Number nine, this was a hot button topic for a long time. This made world headlines, uh, the alcohol. Uh, first of all, is the alcohol safe? I drank a lot of it at uh, eight different properties. Well, nine actually, if you count this one, uh, I'm still here talking about it. So yes, the alcohol is very safe. There's There are a lot of rumors also about the alcohol being cheap and watered down and, and uh, not real. Uh, from my experience, it was 100% authentic. I saw them open the bottles. Uh, it was very, very much the real thing and they are not watered down and the drinks are plentiful and bountiful. So in terms of the rumors about the alcohol not being safe or watered down or not real, 100% not true, uh, very much the opposite. 10, one of the reasons I did not like all-inclusive resorts is because you don't get a chance to see the city and see a lot of the country, but I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not a lot to see in Putacana outside your hotel, just not a lot of attractions and there aren't a lot of marquee uh, venues. So there aren't a lot of high-end restaurants or a lot of high-end sites. If you have fear of missing out uh, about leaving your hotel, don't. There really isn't much to see in Punta Cana. Okay, number 11, um, the rooms. The rooms are safe and secure. Uh, I left a lot of my stuff out. I mean, I travel with some really expensive stuff, whether that's from my boots to my clothes to all of my videography stuff to multiple iPads, wallet. Um, I left everything out. And you might say that's irresponsible. Look, I mean, just take a look at my resume. I've traveled the world for the last 13 years. I kind of have a good idea of the places you need to secure your stuff and the places you don't. I made a list of the hotels I stayed at. These are all high-end properties, uh, you know, multinational corporations with well-trained staff. The last thing they want is an incident. As long as you stay at a decent place, you can take a look at the places I stayed at. You don't have to worry about locking up, locking up your stuff or even having break-ins. So number 11, the rooms were very much safe and secure. Tipping is important, okay? Um, how to tip and when to tip, I made a video on that, but this is very much a tipping country and a tipping culture. You do not wanna be awkward and violate any customs or norms. Uh, I'll basically sum it up and say, bring lots of ones, lots of US dollars. Okay, 13, this one is so important. Listen, listen, listen. The best hotels are not the most expensive. I could give you a litany of examples. I'll just give you a few. Hard Rock was the most expensive hotel I stayed at. By far wasn't the best. That was over $400 a night. I had a much better time at Rio Republica. That was $100 a night. Majestic Mirage, $300 a night. It was the number one rated hotel on TripAdvisor. Majestic Elegance was the older hotel, the more casual, approachable hotel. $200 a night, 50% cheaper. That was a better property. In terms of quality and experience, the price can be misleading. The most expensive hotel is not the best. Uh, number 14, to follow up on that, each hotel has a different vibe. Do your research, watch my videos, and watch a lot of other videos, and go to TripAdvisor. Do your research. Every hotel has a different vibe. For example, Majestic Mirage, the number one hotel on TripAdvisor, was pretty much couples only. They didn't really mention that anywhere. Hotel Rue Republica was a crazy party hotel. That really wasn't mentioned anywhere. Uh, so you definitely wanna do your research on the vibe of the hotel and make sure it is an atmosphere that coincides with your personality and your goals of the trip. Okay, number 15, I've mentioned this in a few of my videos and I have no problem mentioning it again. In fact, um, I wanna reinforce this. The Dominicans are amazing people. They are happy, they are lively, they are effervescent, they know how to live in the moment. Uh, their personalities are infectious. Uh, they are just charismatic and engaging, just overall, I think, exceptional people. Um, I had a lot of great encounters and their personalities and their culture and their vibe is one of the reasons I can't wait to come back. So number 15, the Dominicans are amazing people. Okay, number 16, if you are a global traveler, someone that does not do a lot of all-inclusives or someone that has never done an all-inclusive, definitely pay attention to this. This is 1998 all over again. You need to check out of your hotel room, like a physical checkout, where you go to the front desk, uh, settle up your bill if you do have one, and then they give you a stub to leave. You cannot leave the property without the stub that they give you. The bellmen will, li will literally keep you on site until you present them a checkout stub. So if you think you're just going to walk out of your door because you have a credit card on file, that is not the case. That's usually what I do, but that's not the case these all-inclusives. You need to physically check out. So if you have a flight to catch, or if you are time sensitive in nature, uh, you definitely want to allow time for the actual physical checkout process. 
Number 17, this one is really important as well. Uh, this is a big hack or a big secret or a big tip. You want to bring at least one formal outfit. And I know you're coming into Caribbean and you wanna travel and dress light, lots of t-shirts, lots of swim trunks, lots of sandals. But if you wanna stay at one of these high-end resorts and go to some of their high-end restaurants, uh, they have a dress code and it is enforced. You're not gonna be able to buy your way into it or talk your way into it. I saw a lot of people turned away. So bring at least one formal outfit for guys. That means a collared shirt and closed toed shoes. Number 18, uh, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a global destination. You're gonna find people from all over the world. So if you wanna find a global melting pot in the Caribbean, in a tropical environment, it gets no better than uh, the Dominican Republic and specifically Putacana. You're gonna find people from South America, Central America, uh, North America, lots of Canadians, by the way. Uh, you're gonna find people from Asia. Uh, you're gonna find people from Eastern Europe, Western, Western Europe. Basically, you're gonna find people from all over the world. So if you want a rich cultural experience or a chance to meet people from the entire planet, it gets no better than Putacana. Number 19, to build on that, because of that, the people watching is incredible. Uh, I used to be a huge fan of people watching. I kind of lost that hobby as my business took off and as life became crazier. But in Putacana, I had a chance to really relax, live in the moment, be present. And I found myself people watching again. And it was mesmerizing. It was spectacular. Again, because it's a global environment. And much like Vegas, everyone here is kind of here for different reasons. Some people like to party. Some people like to relax. Some people come here to be romantic with a significant other. There are people here for a myriad of reasons. Um, and it's really kind of fun just to sit back and watch. So the people watching in Putacana is unbelievable. Uh, even though you're at an all-inclusive resort and sometimes it can feel like the walls are closing in and it kind of feels like somewhat of a tropical prison, all right, um, there are a lot of activities. So if you are here for an elongated period of time, past maybe four or five days and you're getting sick of the pools, you're getting sick of the beach, you're getting sick of the overall ambiance, if it's getting repetitive and redundant, you want to shake it up, these hotels offer a litany of activities. So that's zip lining, that's parasailing, that's jet skiing, jet boating, island excursions, dolphin swimming, you name it. So if you are somebody that likes to get out and be adventurous and you're concerned that the all-inclusive might hamper your style, or if you're getting sick on campus and you wanna switch things up a little bit, there are a ton of activities and each of these hotels have a concierge to offer them to you. All right, number 21. And just because I'm getting close to number 25 and getting down the list does not make this any less important. In fact, this is one of the most important ones. When you check in, make your reservations at your restaurants as soon as possible. This should be the order of events when you come to the hotel, when you arrive. Number one, check in. Number two, make your restaurant reservations. No getting a drink, no going to the pool, no unpacking. As soon as you check in, the number two thing you should do is make your reservations. Uh, the restaurant slots are limited, they are coveted, and if you don't make them right away, there's a great chance that you may not get into the restaurant of your choice. Okay, number 22, and this follows up on number 21. When you get to the restaurant, you can eat and drink as much as you want. Now, of course, you can drink as much as you want, but you can eat as much as you want. Do not be afraid to order double entrees. Do not be afraid to order four appetizers, okay? Now, the waiters will try to move you down the menu. They will try to have you order your appetizer, your entree, and your dessert all at once, much like a prefix menu, and you can do that. But don't be afraid to step them back. Don't be afraid to go back to the appetizers and then back to the entrees. Again, they're gonna try to work you down the list, but you can be assertive, be stern, and say, hey, look, I'm still hungry, or I want another appetizer. They will absolutely oblige you. I've done this numerous times, and they all were very, very agreeable, but every single one of them did their best to work me down the menu. Don't be afraid to take your time and say, hey, look, I wanna go back, or, or I wanna order multiple one of these. So number 22, eat as much as you want, but don't be afraid to eat on your terms. Okay, number 23, this is a follow-up on number 22. Don't listen to the waiter recommendations. They are most likely trying to push food on you that they want to get out of their inventory. Typically, they, they buy large and they might have residual inventory on steak, for example. I can't tell you how many times I got the steak recommended to me. Now, either the steak is one of their cheaper items and that's how they keep their costs down or they bought too much and they're trying to get rid of it. But do not listen to the waiter recommendations. If you see something on the menu and the waiter isn't recommending it, 
I would say go for it. And in fact, go for it because it's probably one of the better items. Okay, number 24, this one was hit or miss. The Wi-Fi, generally speaking, is inconsistent. Inconsistent to bad. Now, some hotels had good Wi-Fi, some hotels had bad Wi-Fi, and then I talked to a manager at one hotel, and they said, look, it's the, it's the whole country. The whole country has bad Wi-Fi, it's not the hotel. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. I don't know what to make of it. Um, I'm just gonna tell you what I experienced. It was good, it was bad, uh, and it was really inconsistent. Even my LTE on my phone at times uh, went out and I went down to 3G. So just generally speaking, connectivity is inconsistent. Make sure you know that. If you have to be tethered to your phone or if you need to do some business stuff while you're here, uh, be prepared for maybe some inconsistencies or maybe even some outages. Number 25, I made a video on this. Um, I really don't recommend leaving the resort. I left it several times, but then again, I am an anomaly and I was here for over five weeks, 36 days. Um, but if you have fear of missing out about a great restaurant or a club or whatever, don't. Um, all of my best memories were absolutely at the resort. There is no fear of missing out. There is no marquee restaurant. There is no marquee attraction that is outside the property. And again, a lot of the properties have salons, spas, uh, you know, fitness facilities, markets, pharmacies, and doctors. So I really don't recommend leaving the resort. That's not to say Putacana isn't safe. I made a video on that as well. But generally speaking, there is no need for FOMO, fear of missing out. Uh, everything you need and all your best memories are going to be created inside the property.